Actually, you're going to be very happy by the time we conclude this speech. Mad uh, Madam Speaker, I spent a lot of time preparing my brief response to this bill today, and in the process of doing that, I thought of an author that I recently read, uh, Graham Steele. Now, Graham Steele was a former NDP cabinet minister in the Daryl Dexter NDP government in Nova Scotia not too long ago. He wrote a book called uh, What I Learned in Politics, and it was a very interesting read because he walked into this legislature with the feeling like he was going to make a difference. Walked into the, his legislature feeling like he wanted to come forward each and every time and present on the floor of the legislature and be heard. One of the biggest disappointments that he had was that when he stood and went to talk about some very important things, nobody was listening. Nobody was listening. It was very interesting to read that as a legislator myself, because what we do here is incredibly important. And it's not a time to be playing a video game. It's not a time to be looking at the menu that you're planning on having for lunch. It's time to pay attention for what's being put in front of you. And I'm going to tell you why that's so important, Madam Speaker. I'm going to tell you why that's so important. I endeavor to pay attention very closely when I'm sitting here in the legislature. And I hope that people are listening when I'm delivering a speech about something that's as important as this motion. I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. I've listened to some of my speeches after the fact, and I know that it's uh, a good substitute for melatonin and it could put somebody to sleep at night. But for today and for this brief time, please, I ask and I beg your attention because I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening here. I'm talking about an opposition motion that there's no way we can support. I'm talking about a motion that there are some problems with. But before I tell you why there's issues with this, let's talk a little bit about how this is going to roll out. The opposition puts a motion forward. The government votes against it. Maybe we'll even have a standing vote. The opposition will then get a video clip talking about how they stood up for the average New Brunswicker and the big bad government struck them down. Yeah. Mr. S Madam Speaker, it's important for us to talk about what happens on the floor of this legislature because this motion that's been put forward on the surface talks about taking care of the average New Brunswicker. But the truth of the matter is there's a lot of areas that we do not talk about with this bill. And that's what's very important. It would be mission accomplished for the opposition to stand up and do that. Hey, they could even make an argument that we could do it better. Vote for us next time. But something as important as the care and, 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 and the interests of New Brunswickers cannot be a subject that gets played politics with. So I'm going to go through a little bit about how what was put in front of us doesn't tell the whole story or reflect reality. Let's dig into this motion a little bit, Madam Speaker. And as the, 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 the mover came forward, he talked a little bit about a couple of things. There's a couple of items in his speech that caught my attention. It's only 3.3 million. Go ahead and do it. The food bank component, it's only 2 million. You could do 10 times that. That's just a rounding error. Well, Madam Speaker, I'm going to tell you this right now. Taking the attitude of millions of dollars being rounding errors or chump change is what the previous Liberal government did to add a billion dollars to the debt of the province of New Brunswick. We can't afford that. We can't afford that. So when I look at this motion and I see, whereas the government cancelled the Home Heat Energy Assistance Program, Madam Speaker, that would imply that would imply that nothing was put in place. The Home Heating Energy Assistance Program amounts to, like the member opposite said, $3.3 million. Well, let's just have a conversation. He mentioned the Food and Fuel Program. That's $20 million. That's going to hit $75,000, 75,000 homes, and amount to a one-time payment of $225 for a single person or $450 for a family. Madam Speaker, if you're going to complain about the cancellation of a product or a program, 
You have to do that in light of the entire story and highlight something like a $20 million investment and what that means. And $2 million is not nothing as it goes to the investment into the food banks. That is significant and that announcement was received with incredible respect and humility by the Food Bank Association because that's going to make a difference this Christmas for New Brunswickers and it was important to do. It's not nothing, Madam Speaker. Now you know the rest of the story. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> oh, we're not done. Whereas the government brags about its record, but doing little to help those in need. I take significant issue with the language in that. That is colored language that's meant to send a message to whoever the, 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 the spin is that the members opposite want to have as their audience that nothing's being done. I would go so far, Madam Speaker, as to say there is no braggadocious behavior on this, ha this side of the House, but rather an effort to actually do things that make a difference. And let me take just a moment to go through a small list of that. Seeing the minimum wage increase in the province of New Brunswick to the point where it's the highest in the Maritimes has got to count for something for New Brunswickers trying to make a living. Reductions in property tax affect us directly and are to be celebrated. Two million dollars in support to the food banks means something. It means something to folks that are counting on having a bit extra in that box, ensuring that that box is available and ensuring that the children that they have to come home and provide for will have a full belly at night. I take issue with just calling that nothing, Mr. Speaker. That's significant. The 20 million dollar fuel and food fund, uh, that that hits double the amount of people that the Home Energy Assistance Program does. 75,000 New Brunswickers. So we've got to put things in the, con in the proper context, Mr. Speaker. The Enhanced Energy Savings Program faces much criticism from the members of the opposition. But I'll tell you what, you roll out a program that's going to help 35,000 homes that are at $70,000 and less, and tell me that there's not a speed bump along the way. You know what? It's awful easy to sit on the other side and be an armchair critic, and we knew we'd have to run into a bump or a bang along the way, but we were committed to doing it, we're rolling it out, and I just stood in front of the media today and said, this government's committed to making sure that each and every person that qualifies gets that done. That's got to count for something. I mean, did we forget? Did we forget the fact that the Minister of Social Development not long ago stood and talked about one of the most crucial challenges that we have in the province of New Brunswick? Housing. How much did we announce for housing, for affordable housing? $102 million. That's something to be celebrated. That's something to be celebrated. So when you talk about rounding errors and when you talk about 2 million here and 3.3 million there, you know what, we're going to let that glance off us and work and focus on doing something that takes care of affordable housing, food in the belly, warmth coming into a New Brunswick home. Those are the things that we need to be concerned about for New Brunswick's as we move into the, into the winter months. Income tax changes alone. Income tax changes alone amount to $68 million in this program. So, Mr. Spe Madam Speaker, when I see a motion that comes forward with very caustic language that's meant to divide, that's meant to diminish that quarter of a billion dollars worth of investments in New Brunswickers that need it the most, it gives me great concern. It gives me great concern. I understand the nature of our political theatre and the need for the opposition to oppose. Oppose is the root word of opposition, so I would expect nothing less. But can we not drop the veil of partisanship when it comes to something as important as putting assistance where it needs to go and the work that we've done? Would it be that bad for the opposition to look and say, perfect? No. But this is a government that's moving ahead. I know that's difficult, and I know it's easier to brand us as a government that wants to cut, tear apart, and destroy. Yeah, we've heard it come from you for the last four years. But in the midst of you saying that, what we've done is instead of getting bogged down with that, we've let that deflect off of us and actually move forward with initiatives that bring good things to New Brunswickers. It's a good thing that we don't listen to that. And motions like this are concerning because it sends 
the wrong message. It says that we're doing nothing, and we can't abide by messages like that. We're all, 49 of us were brought here to represent New Brunswickers. So you know what you have to do, what we have to do, and what we all have to be committed to is recognizing when something is being done that is going to make a positive change in the life of New Brunswickers. Now, hold us to account in the process of implementation, but to ignore it and to say it that it doesn't mean anything or to negate it or to not give any credit that we are caring about the citizens of New Brunswick and that we are working to make sure that there are investments that go into those that are most vulnerable, that's disingenuous. And I have to speak out against that. And when I see a motion come forward that I feel is political in its very nature and quite frankly misses the point of serving the marginalized and the disenfranchised in New Brunswick, I'm concerned with it. That's why I sat up last night, late, going through saying, are we really hitting the mark? Are we really doing something for New Brunswickers or are the Liberals correct? When they say we brag but do nothing, is it true? No, it's not. It's not. When I could sit and go through with sober second thought, a highlighter pen, and four years worth of initiatives and say, oh wow, you know what? This motion was actually a tremendous exercise for me because it reaffirmed to me that we're on the right track. Perfect no, but we're getting it right and we're continuing to work hard, and we will not let divisive language take our focus away from doing what needs to be done to serve New Brunswickers. And I can only hope that this is a speech unlike one that my friend in Nova Scotia from the NDP party delivered, and I hope you are all listening very carefully to the seriousness of what I am saying when it comes to the fact that we are a government that is looking to serve the citizens of the province of New Brunswick with our initiatives. I haven't even topped off on all of the other ones that we're involved with, but it's not about that, because I wouldn't want to be accused of bragging. But, but, but at some point, at some point, we have to look at the sum total of what's been done and not brag about it but recognize that it's progress on the way towards making New Brunswick a better place and ask ourselves, once that's done, what else can we do? What else can we do? And we have a number of initiatives that we're working on to make sure that we do that. Why everybody's moving here. So I mean, I've just outlined a quarter of a billion dollars of investments in, quite frankly, those that need it the most and are vulnerable. What we've done is significant is a, a, the progressive realization of many more worthwhile ideals that we need to see accomplished over the course of the next two years we're in government and beyond. And regardless of who's in government, we have to have the humility to look as an opposition and say, a government is getting some things right. Because at the end of the day, when an opposition stands up and says, says everything that a government's doing is wrong, quite frankly, I feel like you're hurting your own credibility. Because at the end of the day, there are some things that are moving forward, some things that are getting done. And when there's a bit of some things, and a couple more things, and a little bit here, and a little bit there, we can look back on four continuous years of governing and say that that aggregate mosaic work of what we've done is going to have a long-lasting impact. And, and, and quite frankly, I can't stand here without standing up and saying that that was a significant significant amount of work that's done. I appreciate the motion coming forward, but I feel like when I listened to what's being said and I hear what's being put forward, with due respect to the members opposite, I feel like we're missing the mark on what your intended mission was. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that it was to create a couple of million dollars to go into New Brunswickers and not for political gerrymandering. I'm going to assume that the sincere heart was there with the opposition and well, and I'm going to finish by saying that despite that, and thank you and appreciate us all being part of the solution, we have put effort in place, we will continue to put effort in place, and we will not stop until every effort we can possibly endeavour to do is done for New Brunswickers. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker.